Sequels, whether we like it or not, are the essence of pop culture. Where would the spectacle of Avengers Infinity War be without all of the previous Marvel movies? Such is the case with video games, but not every game can see a continuation. Whether it's development troubles, a focus on other projects, or the story being wrapped up with the last game, here are those games that may never get a direct sequel. Never say never, but don't hold your breath either. Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots Yes, we had Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes, and The Phantom Pain, but those were prequels. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance was a spin-off that focused on Raiden and was somewhat confirmed as non-canon by creator Hideo Kojima. As it stands, Metal Gear Solid 4 offered the most complete ending for Solid Snake as he embraced the desire to live for himself despite all the trauma faced. There's also all that jazz about the Patriots being defeated, Meryl getting married, and everyone generally living happily ever after as well. Max Payne 3 If we've said it once, we'll say it again. Max Payne has had a hard life. Faced with loss after loss, it seemed like Max would find some solace in South America as a private security contractor. Things didn't work out, surprise, surprise, but as the story advanced, Max slowly began to move past his more self-destructive habits. By the end, an illegal organ harvesting ring had been busted and innocent lives are actually saved as Max is seemingly content for the first time. Dead Space 3 Dead Space 3's story continued in the Awakened DLC, but even that ended in a shoddy cliffhanger. Though there is room for the story to be expanded on, it's highly unlikely we'll ever see that happen. Not only was Dead Space 3 unsuccessful for EA, but its key developer, Visceral Games, had been shut down. If a sequel ever materializes, a reboot or completely new tale wouldn't be out of the question. It may take a while, though. The Walking Dead The Final Season If the name wasn't enough of a clue, Telltale Games confirmed that Clementine's story would be coming to a close in The Walking Dead The Final Season. Of course, Telltale itself came to a close before the game was wrapped up, and now it's Skybound Games that's handling developments on the final episodes. While we could see the Telltale style of adventure continuing, especially in the Walking Dead universe since many former Telltale developers are on board at Skybound, it seems highly unlikely that Clementine gets the spotlight after the final season. The Banner Saga 3 Given the sheer range of choices, decisions, twists, and turns that can happen by playing the Banner Saga trilogy, the third game's ending may differ for some. That being said, the canon ending sees the serpent defeated and the world-consuming darkness halted, at least for the time being. Not everyone will have survived, but if nothing else, there is the promise of rebuilding. Developer Stoic wouldn't be remiss to tell more stories in this universe, but given how definitively things end in the Banner Saga 3, a new game would likely differ plot-wise. Celeste There's a lot going on with Madeline in Celeste as she combats her lack of confidence and that fear of failure seemingly gnawing at her, eventually embracing the less-than-ideal aspects of Madeline. This all culminates at the summit of Celeste Mountain, and really, where does Madeline go from there? Sure, you could enter the core in the prologue-esque Chapter 8 and complete the seaside tape missions. Those are meant as additional challenges, though. For all intents and purposes, even with the post-launch levels coming up, Celeste's story is complete and Madeline is fulfilled. Transistor The end sees the world of Cloudbank in ruins. Red begins the process of rebuilding after defeating Royce, but learns that her companion within the Transistor can't be restored. Red stabs herself with the blade and thus reunites with the mystery man inside of its virtual world, her voice also being restored in the process. It's a bittersweet ending, but at least the two were finally together after all the trials and tribulations. Mirror's Edge Catalyst As a reboot, Mirror's Edge Catalyst actually had its fair share of open threads at the end. Faith earned her iconic tattoo, her sister Isabel is now in charge of Kruger security, and the future still feels as dystopic as ever. And while sales for the game were somewhere around 1.7 to 2 million copies by the start of August, they weren't over the top amazing. With DICE focusing on Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefield, emphasizing post-launch games as a service content in the process, it may be a good long while before Faith gets another run. Enter the Gungeon The story is simple. Four characters enter the Gungeon to kill their respective pasts. As each past is killed, the player eventually comes into contact with the Lich, the undead master of the Gungeon. And though some mysteries may remain once the Lich is killed, the story is pretty much finished after the fact. 
The fact that the developer Dodge Roll is moving on to a new project is also evidence that we won't be seeing a direct continuation of this roguelite for a while. Stardew Valley Developer Eric Concerned Ape Baroni is already confirmed to be working on something new, but Stardew Valley's days aren't numbered just yet. The game will receive some more updates and its community is as bustling as ever. The actual story is more defined by one's goals. Maybe you want to restore the town to its greatness, revamp the community center, make your grandpa proud, or just start a family. The end is up to the player, and given all the things one can do, that makes a direct sequel pretty unlikely. Ico When Ico first released, its setting didn't make the most amount of sense. The overall plot did mystify us with its aesthetic and atmosphere as Aiko does everything in his power to rescue Yorda, which naturally leads to Yorda rescuing Aiko instead. Their union felt like a natural end, and considering the events of Shadow of the Colossus, Aiko filled in many of the gaps around horned children, it's also somewhat ironic. Once again though, don't expect a sequel, especially with director Fumiito Ueda leaving the development team during The Last Guardian's development, to say nothing of the struggles that that game endured throughout the years. Batman Arkham Knight By the time Batman Arkham Knight wraps up, everyone knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne. Sure, the Dark Knight has effectively conquered the Joker, winning the ideological war within, but there's no going back to the double life that defined him. As a result, Batman goes about locking up every major criminal before activating the Nightfall Protocol, apparently killing himself and Alfred as Wayne Manor explodes. It all seems wrapped up, except for the fact that a strange bat-like figure that terrorizes some criminals in an alley after the ending. Someone else taking up the mantle, perhaps? While Rocksteady may have some plans for Batman or other DC heroes down the road, this particular Wayne's journey feels complete. Mass Effect 3 Say what you will about the original endings for Mass Effect 3 and how they didn't take all your decisions into account. While you're at it, throw in some more hullabaloo about the extended cut and how its additional context for the endings wasn't good enough. In the end, Shepard's journey had ended. Whether the Reapers were destroyed or they destroyed all life or everyone got along singing the ashes of humanity. If a new Mass Effect sequel indeed arrived, it'd be surprising to see Shepard back in action considering all the nonsense he went through. L.A. Noir. There are a number of reasons why L.A. Noir could never see a sequel, not the least of which includes the fact that Team Bondi is no more. Even if Rockstar decides to head back to the 1940s film noir version of Los Angeles, it'd be better off telling a brand new story. Protagonist Cole Phelps heroically sacrificed himself in the first game, and while Kelso is still a factor, his part in the plot strikes us more as a sad irony than an unresolved thread. Given the gold that Rockstar had struck with Grand Theft Auto V and recently with Red Dead Redemption 2, we'd be surprised if L.A. Noir ever springs back to life with a sequel. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End For all intents and purposes, the Uncharted franchise has always been about Nathan Drake. We see the world through his eyes, performing wanton murder and platforming in the name of grand adventure and thrill-seeking. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End could have offered a darker aspect of Drake's return to treasure hunting, but instead, it capped off the series admirably. Nathan and Elena have some sense of adventure in their lives, going legit as salvagers and even having a daughter named Cassie. Once Cassie has grown up and discovers Drake's past, things come full circle as Nathan narrates his tales, seemingly setting up his daughter for future adventure. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.